Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and welcome to the fifth video in the beginner's guide to Unity 6. In this tutorial we'll be covering gravity and physics. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload. Feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. I also have a Patreon page where you can help be a part of this channel and you'll also find all the scripts and the assets to this series there too, along with plenty of other things. You can also now join as a free member. Now on with the tutorial. So, how do we get physics in this game? Well, there is something that you may have noticed already. Whenever we have an object clicked, you'll notice these green lines. I haven't talked about them at the moment. However, these green lines represent some kind of physics. These are known as colliders. What is a collider? It means something can or cannot pass through something. It means something can land on something. It can mean something is also a trigger. So physics can be used in many different ways, not just to stop people walking through objects or to stop people falling through the ground. So a good example of that is you could use physics to collect an object. And I know that sounds a bit strange at the moment, but it is something that we'll cover a little later on. So let's put in an example of physics and gravity. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that is basically just a ball. So let's go to game object and let's go to 3D object and let's go to sphere. Let's put this in the center of our scene and let's drag it upwards and let's bring it across so we can see it a bit better somewhere around here. At the moment, it doesn't look too impressive. So let's quickly add some texture to it. I'm just going to drag and drop this stone texture and it'll do just fine. If you want to add a normal map to it, that's absolutely up to you. But this one is more about what the ball will do. So something we haven't done at the moment is explore the camera and the game view. And we're going to do that now so we can physically see something happening in this game. If we go to the main camera and you'll notice these lines here, they all point outwards. This is what the game view can see. If you click the game tab, you can see that's what will be rendered. So let's drag our camera this way, all the way back to where our bridge is, roughly. Press the game view again, and you can see that's where our ball is. If we were to press play, nothing would happen at all, because nothing is inside the game that can do anything. It would just be rendering what we've built. So how do we make it so as this ball actually does something? Well, again, this is where we can insert gravity and relate it to the physics in the game. This requires a component to be added. So if we click on our sphere, scroll down on our inspector panel and click on add component, this is where you can see all the different components that can be added. Now we're dealing with physics, so we need to click on physics and we need to add gravity or the ability for this particular object to use a gravitational force. And to do that, we use this thing right here called rigid body. So if we click it, you'll see a couple of different options and we'll change some of these. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to press play. So although we've applied the rigid body, you can see that there is some kind of physics now going on. This sphere actually moved. It's being affected by gravity. However, if we try dragging our sphere over here to our bridge, just making sure that it is over the bridge. So we'll place it just here. Let's take our camera and let's turn it 180 degrees. So we're actually looking at the bridge. Click game view. We can see it. In fact, let's drag our camera up a little bit so we can see a bit better. There we go. So what happens when our sphere that has the gravitational force attached in a rigid body, what happens when it hits the bridge? We saw when it hit the ground, it stopped, but it just goes through our bridge. You have to remember that not everything in your game when you import it will be set up to correctly determine physics. In this case, our bridge, you probably can't see any green outline around it. That means there is no collider on there. So what we'll do is we'll go to tube 01, which is our bridge, and we will scroll down. Let's go to add component, and then let's go to physics, and we'll click box collider. So let's talk about colliders. Colliders come in different forms. 
The main and simplest one would be a box collider. Something like a mesh collider can also be used. Now, what is the difference between a mesh collider and a box collider? Well, if we scroll down and go to add component, go to physics once again, and click on a mesh collider just here. And let's turn off box collider. And then let's tick convex in the mesh collider. You'll notice that a lot of those lines are all over the place. Now, something like this means that a mesh collider is attempting to seek out every angle of the object and put a collider on it. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. It's not really relative to us at the moment to have a mesh collider because it's not going to work the exact way we want it to. Also, in the long run, it could use up far more resources than is necessary. So when it comes to most objects, you probably don't need a mesh collider for the physics. You just need a box collider. A good example would be a chair. If you have a chair in your scene, you don't need a mesh collider to do every angle of the chair. All you would need is a box collider around that chair to stop the character from being able to walk through it. You would also save many resources. So let's remove this mesh collider component. Let's right click and we can remove component. Let's retick box collider and let's take a look. Is this box collider exactly right? Well, if we zoom in and take a look, no, not quite, because we want this bit to be walkable. However, it's saying that the collision is just above it. And we can use this to our advantage because we can change the position or the center or the size of the actual collider itself. For example, if we change this center, hold your mouse over Y, hold the left mouse button down and move it up and down. And you'll notice that this collision now changes. So we could have that like so. If we set this as 2.5, you could do it manually that way. Now, if we press play, we'll be able to see that this game object, the sphere, will land on the bridge. Perfect. So what it basically means is that you need to determine in your game what counts and what doesn't count as correct physics. For example, if we take our sphere, let's move it all the way this way to the end of our bridge. Let's rotate our bridge. Let's change the rotation on the X. So it kind of should make the ball roll basically. And what we'll do is we'll bring it upwards to about there. Uh, oh, a bit more actually, I think, because I want the sphere to basically roll onto this bit right here. So let's bring the sphere up a little bit more to there. Let's press play. And let's see what happens. So naturally, it lands on the bridge and starts rolling down the bridge. This is the power of the rigid body. So all of this motion that's happening is all because of the rigid body. And as I said, there are different options that you can change in here. And changing some of these things will have a dramatic impact on what's happening with your um, particular game object. For example, if we were to constrain it, if we freeze the position or freeze the rotation, it wouldn't quite look right. Let's put that to the test. Let's change uh, the freeze rotation to all be true. What this means is that everything will still be applied apart from the rotation. So the ball will still fall, it'll still move down, but it won't actually rotate. So it looks a bit odd if you get what I mean. So be mindful of a lot of these options that don't necessarily need to exist. For example, if we change the mass to a thousand and press play, in our scene view, it's not really relative because at the end of the day, the mass of this is not a thousand. It's, it's irrelevant to what we're trying to do. You could change the drag, the angular drag, and you'll see some dramatic effects depending on the game object. So in this case, there is a lot more drag on there. There's no need for the drag to exist. So the whole thing still functions as you would expect, but the drag is what changes the physics. So if we wanted standard physics, I'd say that's just fine. That's not a problem at all. When it comes to this fence over here, if we zoom into it and let's go to the fence object, which is that one there. Again, there is no actual collider on it. So we could theoretically add a collider 
And now, if we had a player, the player would not be able to walk through this unless we set up that player to be whatever they were trying to do. Other things you could do is, not that it's really relevant at this point, but if we wanted to duplicate our fence, drag it upwards to, let's say there, maybe change the rotation a little bit, let's say 32, 41, uh, 5 or something like that. And then let's add a rigid body to it. There is a different way you could add it. Let's say you don't know where to look for something, but you know what you want. So you could type in here and say rigid body and it would appear easy. Let's change our camera to face the other way once again, set it back to zero. Click on game view to make sure our fence is there. And let's press play to see what would happen with the fence. It should fall and land flat. Perfect. So what this means is that creating the correct environment for all of your physics is important. Now, if we put this fence back to, uh, let's say, zero, zero, zero on rotation, and let me bring the camera down just a little bit so we can see the end result. The physics won't quite function as you would hope. So let's press play. And it just ends up like that. So what you've got to be very mindful of is if in this case of this piece of wood, what if we remove the box collider? Let's go back to our scene view and just pan our camera around a little bit and went to add component and we wanted to add a mesh collider and then click on convex. We may end up with a slightly different result now. If we press play, we should see our fence fall to the ground and do that. So remember earlier when I was saying that some things would need to have a mesh collider, this is a perfect example of where physics shows that the appropriate collider is not a box collider in that case. It's the appropriate collider for physics in this fence, but it is not the appropriate one for the fence falling down. If we were to take multiple fences, so hold control, press D, let's move a couple around a little bit just to kind of illustrate things. They all not interact with each other, but they are somewhat relevant to each other's existence. So if we press play now, all four fences will fall. They'll do roughly the same thing, but you'll notice that here, for example, this one now falls on top of the other one. Perfect. Although we're using um, mesh colliders here, I wouldn't worry too much about it impacting your performance of your game. The problem with mesh colliders is using far too many unnecessarily. If an object is necessary for a mesh collider, then yes, use it. If it's unnecessary, don't use it. And what it all comes down to, I think really, is just how you want your game to be. Like if we, um, let's say we duplicate this fence, this one here, sorry. There we go, got the right one. Duplicate it multiple times. This object now exists within itself. And what you could end up seeing are some very odd effects. And hopefully it will work when we do it. There we go. So what's happened there is the object itself has detected inside its collider is other objects that shouldn't be there. And they kind of push each other away. And I think I want to bring the camera backwards a little bit to kind of illustrate just how that physics works. So if I bring it back, there we go, and press play now, let's see what happens to these fences. You can see that they push themselves away. And that all comes down to two things. As I've said, it's the rigid body that's attached and it is the collider that we have attached as well. So when it comes down to gravity and physics, Having those two hand in hand is what really, really counts to getting things working correctly. Uh, next tutorial, what we'll do is we will look at animation. So remember to subscribe and click that notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial. And I will see you next time.